Hey Legends, this week is all about cleaning up those mistakes we made last week, getting our team ready for the round 13 buy, and making sure that we're in a position to, uh, to score some decent points and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, moving up that ladder. So with all of that in mind, let's get into it. Okay, so we've got our magic marker, and if you don't know, I, uh, I made a huge mistake last week with trades just not locking in. We were um, supposed to have Nico Hines here in half. We had what I thought was locked. We had um, Reese Walsh coming in for Ponga down here. In the end, none of those trades went through, and we had to make some decisions on the fly. Now, obviously... We had Fogarty in as captain and we had Trebojevic in as vice. Now we do need to make some changes there because both of those things won't fly in round nine. We were able to scramble and pick up Max Plath for his 57 and obviously we got Trey Fuller in for his 68 as well. So generally pretty happy with uh, the guys that we bought in even though they weren't Nico Hines and they weren't Reese Walsh last week. Now... We've got some big decisions to make on some underperforming players. Terrell May and his 16 is a big question mark. Ethan Strange and his 14. Joey Lusick, 27 and out on the bye this week. We've got some Bulldogs coming back in Salmon. Got some question marks there. Hughes, what are we going to do with him? And obviously, I think a lot of us have just heard the news that Nathan Cleary is out this weekend so we've got a decision to make on what do we want to do with him do we want to buy someone to replace him or we've held this long should we continue to hold for a little bit longer so with all of that in mind here are some of the things that i am thinking in terms of players in and out okay so first up i really want to make this jamal fogarty to nico hines change it's a change that we thought we had locked in last week, and it's a change that I definitely want to fix this week, especially in light of the fact that uh, Nathan Cleary isn't playing this week. Now, to do it, obviously, 750k and 996k, so almost a million bucks now for Nico, isn't too much of a stretch for me to get there, but what I do have to do is convert some of these higher dollar guys, like either Joey Lusick or Salmon, down to... What I hope to be a really good performing cheapy in Armstrong here. He's only 267k. He got the 50 in round 8, which was really awesome. And the other thing I need to do is really make a decision on Terrell May. He got a really disappointing score last round, and we do need to make sure that we get our mids firing. And I think Jolliffe here is the way to go. The big decision that I have to make, and I can do it by selling Salmon. What we do know about Salmon is he is likely to make a little bit more money and he does cover round 13. Joey Lusick, on the other hand, has some question marks. Now, he is on the buy this week. He's not going to make money. He's not going to lose money. But I would probably be looking to sell him if Brendan Hands is on the bench next week. So let's just go and write BH in there because that is a question mark for me for next week. If Brendan Hands is there next week, then he is a definite sell. But if Brendan Hands doesn't come in for round 10, then uh, the question marks remain. What do we do with Joey Lusick? Do we perhaps downgrade into a Braley? That's definitely something that's on my radar for next week. So big question marks there on what we do. And then obviously the uh, the Nathan Cleary thing came up the uh, this morning as well. So big decisions. I think this is the right way to go at this point in time. And let's have a look how that looks into my team. Okay, now we did have Nathan Cleary here, but we've obviously had to uh, to sub in Lockie Galvin. And Nathan Cleary will go down here into our emergency number eight position. Holding Lusick allows me to do this looping situation here which i think is a good thing because we don't know how ethan strange is going to go this week and with lukey on the bench for the cowboys that obviously raises some questions about finney fuiaki's performance sam hughes well he should go okay i would have thought i think he will deliver some good points but how many i don't exactly know and it's that unpredictability that keeps me keeping him in the emergencies now, looking at the lineup, Harry Grant, 54, I'm pretty happy with. 
Ruben Cotter, he continues to get around this 50 mark, but we want to see more from Ruben Cotter or he will be on the chopping block. Definitely up for consideration going into State of Origin. Jolliffe comes in, and if he can continue these 60s, I'll be really happy. We've got Maxi Plath there with his 57. I think this 30 from KPP is a little bit of an anomaly. And I think he's definitely in for a bounce back game. I'm looking for 50 plus from him. Angus Crichton, well, we've whacked the big V on him this week. So he hopefully will have, again, another 50 plus game. It's up against the Broncos. So that should be the match of the round. Really can't wait to see that one. Nico Hines, I've put the big C on him. We should have had him last week, but unfortunately not. I doubt very much he'll get the 124, but if he can go somewhere around the, let's say, 80 plus mark, I think I'll be pretty happy with Nico Hines. I certainly think he's going to be one of the highest scoring players in this team, especially now that Nathan Cleary is out. Galvin, we kind of expect him now to be a 50 plus player. That would be absolutely phenomenal especially for someone so young. Absolutely amazing. Iro just continues to deliver in the center spot. I'm not very confident I'm going to get a 48 out of Jesse Arthurs up against the Roosters, but if he can go 30 plus, I think I'll be okay with that. Paps, we're looking for some consistency down here. Somewhere around the 50 from Paps would be absolutely amazing. And that 27 last week from Turbo was disgraceful. I'm hoping he can bounce back against the Raiders in a big way this weekend. Again, though, Turbo is someone that's on our radar for perhaps moving out before the round 13 buy. So he's only got a couple of weeks left in him anyway. Trey Fuller, amazing. He's been an absolute revelation for the Dolphins. 68 last weekend. If he can get anywhere near that this weekend, I will be absolutely blown away. So Trey Fuller, really happy. We're bringing in David Armstrong. Again, great debut for this 50. Brendan Piakura, I'm expecting that he'll continue to build on this. I'm not exactly sure where he'll be, but if he can continue to improve, I'd love a 40 plus out of him this week. That would be amazing. Corey Waddell, 39, a little bit disappointing, but I reckon that he can build on that. And again, 40 plus from him would be good. What I really want from him is just obviously the flexibility with middle and edge, but continue to make us a little bit of money. That would be amazing. And there you go. That kind of rounds out the team for this weekend. We've got a little bit of work to continue to do going into uh, to next weekend and prepping our team up for the buy round. Joey Lusick is a question mark and is possibly someone that we'll look to trade. I'd really love to hold Ethan Strange. I think if I can hold him through until at least the round 13 buy, that would be amazing. Similar with Finney Fuyaki, I think if I can hold him at least until round 13, that would be great. So I'm hoping that Lukey doesn't have too much of an impact on him. And of course, we'd love to hold Sam Hughes through until that round 13 buy as well. So those three guys I'd love to hold. Players on the chopping block for me over the next few weeks are going to be Turbo down here. I'm probably looking to move on Jesse Arthurs as well at some stage. And that's really probably it for now. I think I'm pretty comfortable with where we're at. We also need to start thinking about how we hold trades. I know Ruben Cotter could probably be another one as well that we look to move on just before Origin. But outside of that, I think I'm in a pretty comfortable spot with the team I have. I just need them to uh, to step up and start smashing some points out of the park this week. That would be amazing. So there you go, guys. Look, that's the team. That's the trades for round nine going into this weekend. I really wish you guys well in terms of your tipping, in terms of your fantasy score. If you're into Supercoach, I had an absolute blinder in Supercoach last week. I got 1,383 points. Can you believe that? I'm not even trying over there. And that was a top 2% score, which is just crazy. I'm also sitting on something like 700K in, uh, in spare salary to make some big moves with next week as well. I may even do a little bit of a, a quick Supercoach video just to give you an update on how that team is going. But there you go, guys. Look, that's the video. If you've liked it, you know what to do. Smash that like button for me. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, guys, get involved in the conversation via the comment section down below. And I'll see you all in the next video.